when we create the identity, we create the story. We create the story, we create the reality. And it's so vital, you guys. Your words are shifting you every single day. What you say will create the story, which will create your reality. Be careful with your words. And that's where I started going after it. And that's where I got introduced to it. The Enlifted Method and, and Mark England, the more and more I searched, because I knew psychologically there was something going on here. And my study was in speech communications in my undergrad. And so words were always something I'm like, there's, there's power here, what is this? And that, that really is what, what drove me to where I'm at now. Welcome to the Strength Connection Podcast, a show to share stories, insights, and experiences in strength, physically, mentally, and spiritually. I'm Michael Krukowski, host of The Strength Connection, and I'm so grateful that you can join me today. So in these episodes, I connect with some of the most inspiring and successful individuals to chop it up and learn from true life experiences that have helped them become who they are, the strongest versions of themselves. One of the greatest ways I've always learned the most important lessons is through stories. We all have them, and they make us who we are. So let's dive in. Here we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. Joel Cochran, it's really great to meet you, and thanks so much for taking the time. I'm super grateful, man. Howdy, man. I, I'm a really appreciative of being on here and, and looking forward to diving in. The, the doors are wide open on this podcast, so I'm Absolutely. excited to go. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. We're going to dive into the deep end. Who knows where that's going to go in many different directions, but the work yeah. that, yeah, the work that I've seen, you know, you do with proclivity and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the message that you have, I just, I love yeah. when, when people, everybody knows it's kind of deeper than just the you know, the surface level of, you know, move more and eat these things and stuff like that. And we'll want to get yeah. into really the identity and really the, the mental side of it. everybody kind of knows that, but to actually yeah. take the time to build that practice up and to really work it in with the people that you're working with, it's a little bit more few and far between. And I see from the work that you've done is you're, you're one of those guys. So I'm really excited to dive into your process and uh, just get to know you a little better. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's been one heck of a, of a journey in terms of, I've been very lucky and blessed to be in a, a lot of different positions throughout my life and learn a lot of different um, techniques with health and with fitness and with business. And it's, it's given me a lot of tools to help people and, and really go up to a very high level and then realize like, oh, wait a second, this is actually very, very simple. Like all the things that we think in life that are very complex are quite simple. Yeah. We've just made them a lot more complex than we need. And that that has been my approach with everything um, when building out proclivity is, no, we can do it simpler. No, even more simple than that. Yeah. You know, and when you get down to the base, the foundation, people almost don't want to believe it. Cause they're like, it can't be that easy. And I go, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Are you willing to put in the reps with something that is that simple? Yeah. It, it's interesting. I've, I've thought about that a lot and it's almost like maybe you have to experience the complexities that you think it is in order to recognize the simplicity of it sometimes. Well, big time. I, I believe, I mean, a lot of different like um, books that I have read, the one thing I'm trying to remember the author of that, um, you know, books like that, that are talking about like big time business guys who are like, no, 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 you don't need to get caught up in all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Do the one thing. And when you look at all the incredible success in the world, a lot of it is people deciding I'm going to do this one thing really dang well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do electric cars really well. Nothing else. Just electric car. I'm gonna ship goods to people really well. Amazon, right? You, I'm just gonna do that one thing really, really well. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get too complicated into the service of it. And uh, I believe if we were all more into a simplistic, like, hey, can I be really great? Am I willing to put in the ten thousand hours mm -hmm. to be incredible at this? We get distracted and we kind of move off and. Yeah, we were just getting to really good. Yeah. And we get distracted and we go somewhere else. Yeah. I wonder if it's, you know, because there might be some FOMO in that. Sometimes we think that there's so many things that we need to learn mm -hmm. that we need to have mm -hmm. our finger on the pulse of a lot of different things. When mm -hmm. in reality, if you just 
like put a focus on one thing, you know, kind of like, what's the non-negotiable? I'm going to make sure I get this done. If I do other stuff around mm -hmm. it, that's great, but I'm going to get really good at this one thing. You're probably going to learn a lot more about other things just from happenstance of experiencing it. You know, I always think oh, yeah. of guys like, like Brett Contreras, you know, he's known as the glute guy in mm -hmm. fitness. And he's doing all this stuff to maximize building a butt. But the guy knows more about training in other areas than, of course. than most people from it. But he's like, all right, I'm just going to keep this focus on one specific thing. That's right. Yeah, the the niches uh, or the riches are in the niches kind of mm. idea and, and, and thought process. And yeah, I that's how we uh, approach it at Proclivity is mm. simple. No, even more simple, even more simple. And it works. It works yeah. really well. I love that. Yeah. So I want to kind of dive deep into something quickly with you because you have a phrase, maybe it's a mantra, but just a mm -hmm. phrase that you love yeah. that you say a lot. I think you're like, even your team kind of makes fun of you saying this is the best day ever. Best day. And you say this all the time. Wh where did that phrase come from? Why is that so powerful to you in there? Like there's some self-evidency in it, but there's something that's mm -hmm. really personal to you. How did that come about? Yeah, it, I believe that you know, on the other other side of constriction is expansion. And if we're willing to be in that constriction long enough, life has a really good way of giving us what we want. But too often people get into that constriction and they run away. And there was a time in my life where I was in a very dark hole, physically not in the worst shape that I've ever been in. Uh, really lost on what I'm supposed to do with my purpose and really at a point of like suicidal thoughts and, and tendencies. And it was just, it was a dark, dark place. And being in that dark of a place, when you start getting to the other side, when you start getting to expansion, then you start going like, oh, wait a second. Life is beautiful. Life is incredible. It's like somebody who got the, you know, who had a sickness or an injury and what you were used to was taken away from you. And then you got it back and you're like, whoa, this is wild. And coming through that and getting to the other end. I started really counting the smallest things in my life, the smallest of blessings. The very first thing is being able to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. You know, that people will ask me when I say best day ever, I'm checking out and they go, Hey, how's your day? Oh, best day I've ever lived. Mm -hmm. And they go, really? What happened? And I said, man, let me tell you a secret. Like I got out of bed this morning. I know. I, I... Right. There was hundreds of thousands of people who didn't cause they're dead. There's even more who are unable to get out of bed because they're sick. And so when you count the smallest blessings in your life, the smallest of things, and I'm talking like, when I get up, I feel my body and my fingernails and my face and I go, oh my gosh. And I get pumped up that I'm in this body standing on this floor. And I look down at my foot and I go, this could be my last first step. Like I literally may never get the chance to take this step again. I'm going to take it with authority. I'm going to take it into the best day I've ever lived. And with one step, I go, I walk into this day as the best day ever. And I take one step and putting that much emphasis into just the start of your day, that helps me be able to go, everything else is a bonus here. Work, everything else, it's all a bonus at this point. And then when I get to bed that night, I lay my head down. I say a prayer and I go through the process of saying goodbye to everybody in my life because I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow. That, that This could be my last slumber. And when I have that deep of a rich prayer about my mom and my dad and my friends and my family and what an incredible life and that that I pray over them to, to be able to have just a, a fruitful life. Yeah. If I'm not here tomorrow morning, I can rest then my head down going, I'm okay. But this is my last breath and I don't wake from the slumber. I'm okay. And I feel content. 
And then it happens again. I wake up the next morning. I'm like, holy shit, I did it again. Get another chance, another what? opportunity. <laughs> Best day ever. So that that's my process of how I how I go through and it yeah. works every single day. I love that. I really appreciate you sharing that. It's uh you know, it's, if you go into like even stoic philosophy, like the thing about the stoics is they ponder death every day, you know, just right. thinking because like they're they're not afraid of it. It's not saying that it's out there and you don't take it for granted. Like you take, you know, you recognize every day. And it's funny that you mentioned this because I just wrote about this this morning of, you know, it's, I start every training session with just a mantra of this is a gift. Movement is a mm. gift, you know, and it's just yes. a short, just that short phrase. And sometimes there's more to it from there, but just that simplicity of it. Yeah. And what was in my head is it it's very easy for us to recognize the monumental days, the PR days, right? It's like you oh, yeah. you hit that you hit that deadlift PR you've you've been waiting for or you know you graduate from something something big happens. Like it's easy mm -hmm. to it's easy to recognize gratitude in those days. And it's, you right. know in contrast on those days when it's the darkest and darkest of days and you have nothing else to do except kneel down and pray. It's mm -hmm. also kind of easy to find gratitude there, but yeah. in those humdrum kind of boring, monotonous, normal days that fortunate for many of us, that makes up the majority of our day. You say, Oh, nothing sure. really is happening. Like the, actually that's really a privilege to nothing's happening. You know, really mm -hmm. it's like you, like you actually have the opportunity to go in and move your body to grab a kettlebell, grab a barbell and actually just move it around. Yeah. Yes. It's so easy just to go into it and just go through the motions. But when you actually step into that and actually recognize that as a powerful moment that you have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it does, it changes how you approach what you're doing in that time. Mm -hmm. And you recognize that all you have at that time is a piece and I can understand like, this is a, this is probably a practice that you built up over time. Right. Like this wasn't just something one day of like, oh yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's like actually yeah. doing that. What was that process like for you? Did, was that, yeah. is that like a writing process? Was it, it started mm -hmm. with prayer? How did that go about? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a really good question. Um, you know, first and foremost, like, you know, people will talk to me about, man, how are you able to, you know, do all these different coaching calls and, you know, some are so heavy and help all these people and, stay so grounded. And my response is each and every time, God, like God has given me the ability to be stable because I already know my, for me, right? I already know my ending. So I already know the beauty that is to come. I already know the love that he has for me and the love that's within me from God. And so I am fully complete in need of nothing else, no more. And when you need nothing else and need no more, then you're fully complete. And so it's easy to be able to be in a coaching session and to go through these things and money or no money, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And then this, the second piece and second part was healing my relationship with my mom. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, we we have to realize that we acquire our personality traits from our parents, put a period, put an end, or whoever your caretaker is. And if your caretaker hasn't done uh, explorative work within themselves, healed their wounds with their parents or themselves, they will pass it on to you. Again, put a period at the end of it. And when that is passed on to you, they will pass on the breathing techniques that they have, their stress techniques that they have, their emotional coping mechanisms that they have onto you. And then you go out into the world and you start facing other people. And yet you have this, these mechanisms that you may not even know or that you're aware of, yeah. but you have these reactions to work or what people say. And it becomes this very external to internal world. They said this thing that really upset me. She broke up with me. Mm -hmm. He didn't see my worth at work. This job isn't treating me fairly. Mm -hmm. We have no control of the external, but we were seeking safety in the external because we weren't shown how to create safety within the internal. And so I went on a journey to be able to heal myself. And that's the most important part for anybody that's listening. It is not about your mom saying sorry or your dad coming back, 
or your, you know, ex-wife saying she was wrong. Yeah. No, that's not the answer. The answer is your feeling about why your ex-wife is wrong. Is she wrong? Is it about your mom and what she did or she didn't do? Or how you perceived what she did and she didn't do? And as soon as we start changing our perception of the realities we always thought were 100% true and 100% proof, and we start flipping that around and going like, wait, yeah, the reality was that my mom was verbally and physically abusive. But my perception of the reality can change at any moment. How I see that and how I carry myself can change 10 years later, 20 years later for my, my sake. It was 30 years later before I went, this actually doesn't have anything to do with my mom. And by doing that, I created full control within myself, full internal to external, which gave me the strength to then go talk to my mom and dad and to sit them down and to read out to them a letter saying, Hey, I'm not here to point fingers. I'm actually here to invite you into a beautiful relationship with me, a relationship of healing, a relationship of love. Yet here are a few things I, I want you to know where I'm coming from. And you don't have to acknowledge it. You don't have to say you were right or wrong. I'm just letting you know, yeah. because I've already known that I've healed that. And when I did that, I opened up a space for my parents to feel safety, that they safety they didn't have with their parents. We have this tendency to think like our parents, right, are our leaders, our protectors. Well, I can tell you right now, you can be the leader and protector of anybody you want on this planet. The most important thing is the safety, the soil that you till, your own soil, where your seeds of success can be planted. And if that soil is rich, then others will want to come and plant their seeds as well. And that's a beautiful thing. And from then, my parents... And our relationship has exponentially grown abundance and beyond along with my brother and along with many other relationships within my family, because I went, I don't need anything from you, but I'm inviting you into something that's incredibly beautiful. My hand is extended. You can, or you don't have to. And that, that was a solidifying point for me in being able to create that safety within myself to create that space for all of my clients. Mm. You know, that safety you talk about with conversations, it's uh, that's what I'm racking my head around there. Cause like to have that conversation is one thing, but to go into that conversation without an expected outcome is mm -hmm. probably something very different from there because it's very easy to be like, I want to tell you this and I'm, I, I blame you for this. And this is why I am how I am. Mm -hmm. And all yeah. of a sudden, then that's two bulls butting heads That's right. That's versus, right. versus going in and saying, I just like, I mean, it's the phrase, I want to get this off my chest. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like, this mm -hmm. is what I just, I need to say this to you. So mm -hmm. what was, what was the leading up to that conversation? How are you feeling on that? That, that, that had to be a nerve wracking kind of drive over there. Yeah. That's uh, it. It was the easiest thing that I've done in my life. And, you know, when I tell people that they go, what? I mean, come on, do you, you weren't nervous. You weren't worried. No, no, no. The nerves and the worriness when we're going to confront trauma of the past is from the younger self. So our younger version of ourself that felt unsafe or unprotected because they didn't have the tools to be able to leave the house when it was there was verbal or physical mm -hmm. abuse right they weren't able to, i'm gonna go get an apartment like i'm out of here well you we couldn't do that at eight years old they also didn't have the emotional tools to be able to understand mom or dad's rage or what was going on within the house well they didn't know because the only thing they were uploading was their parents and so if the parents didn't show safety the child didn't know how to create safety and so but as soon as you come in and you start healing those pieces. I am now the adult. I am showing that younger version of Joel that had those experiences. Hey man, I got you. So you don't have to look towards mom anymore for safety. You don't have to look towards dad for safety. You can look to me and I got you. And so going into that conversation, 
that younger self that usually would get really ramped up and and like angry in mm-hmm. those type of conversations was like, no, you got me. And I go, yeah, I got you. And so I was able to come into that conversation and, and trust me, anybody who's listening out there, who's like thought about wanting to have a conversation with your mom and dad, mm-hmm. I've helped many, many people have those conversations. Yeah. It takes time to prepare for that. Sure. It took me an entire month. I wrote the whole, I wrote the whole letter out. I rewrote it three times. I read it out every single time out loud. I then read it out and recorded myself so that I could see the way I was reacting. And then I did it one more time before I left so that I knew that my mom was going to sit there. My dad was going to sit there so that when I said this about this certain letter, I was looking at my mom. When I said this about the letter, I was looking at my dad. I knew to breathe at this point. I need to get, I need to give it space here. The, when you're prepared and I do this, the same thing when I do any public speaking, mm-hmm. you got to be prepared for it. Pros yeah. are prepared. And so I took that same pros are prepared going into this, the biggest speech of my life. I've mm-hmm. done speeches in front of hundreds and hundreds of people. This was the biggest speech of my life because this was the speech that my younger self needed to hear, to feel safe, to create that healing within my, myself and my central nervous system so that I could then move forward. And, and that, that was the, that was the process, but I can tell you, I was calm the entire yeah. time. When my mom got upset, sure. my dad asked questions. I remained calm because I knew what my outcome was. And I said to him time and time again, mom, the outcome of this letter is to create a healed and loving relationship between my mother and father. And I invite you in. You know, it's such a powerful way of approaching something that is really, I mean, so deeply personal to you because I mm-hmm. could see it of like, when you said like, it's the easiest thing. I understand where you're coming from, on it. from the preparation I could see it like, absolutely, like something important, prepare for it, like over prepare for it. Like, I think that's one of those things we say like, oh, you can only control what you can control. You can control a lot more than you think in many ways. Like you can visualize that in so many different ways. But also I would assume that going in because this was, you knew you had to do this for yourself, like just doing it and whatever outcome came from it and whatever, Mm -hmm. however it was perceived you're probably okay because you knew that you're okay at the end of this. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. There was no, there was no expectation. Cause I, mm-hmm. at that point wasn't living external to internal. Everything was internal. Right. So I was just giving my light to my parents. Yeah. It wasn't that I needed to receive anything from them. I was light. And so I was inviting them to be able to come in and they sure enough, they saw the light and they came, they came in and, mm-hmm. This is not to say, guys, that I had this one conversation and it was just, <laughs> and it was roses and it and was Daisy great. And happily ever after, close. No, the yeah. there was, I needed to continue to stand up to myself, not for myself. That's external to internal. To myself is internal, me. When my mom brought up her trauma in the past, and I, there was a couple things that I outlined in my letter. One of them specifically was talking about politics because there was a lot of connection with my mom and and, and motion with my mom when it comes to politics and it would get put onto Mm -hmm. us as her her children and even her husband uh, just because she was, she was scared. But I said, I'm not going to engage in politics. You're more than welcome to talk about politics. I'm just not going to engage. And so there was multiple times where we'd be on the call and it was, you know, bringing up politics and I would be silent. And I stood up to myself as much as I wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. And the times that I did need to say something where I felt like I was starting to feel unsafe around my mother, I said the things that usually I would just shut down. I stood up to myself and said, hey, mom, this conversation is making me feel really unsafe. And here's the reasons why. And when I did that, it helped her to snap out and go, oh, I don't want to make my son feel unsafe. And I didn't know those things I was saying was making him feel unsafe. And that, that was again, moments where it was scary to do so. It was breaking trauma loops of the past, but it, it, and still to this day, and will always be with my parents because they're human. I have to react to what's going on from them internally. How am I going to respond to this? And so it's a, it's a process yet. It's the most beautiful process that anybody can go through is creating that internal to external 
point of view. I love that internal, external. I, I want to come back to that, but it's, you know, these crucial conversations that you have, I think of such a power behind it is once you do it once, all of a sudden it kind of opens up these flood doors, be like, okay, what other conversations do I need to have? You know, sure. like all of a sudden you start getting into other mm-hmm. things. And I wanted to ask you, Joel, because I mean, in the work that you did from being an owner of a CrossFit affiliate and then moving into proclivity and all this stuff. I mean, you've done thousands of onboarding with people and that beginning process is when people are throwing their problems at you and stuff like that. Is this, do you see this with most people where they're taking internal problems, but they're bringing it out externally saying, Oh, this, Mm -hmm. this is more like where they're saying like, I have external problems and Mm -hmm. like, it's just, they're not ready to face internal things. How is that process? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, we're only aware of what we know, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like when people are like, well, I know the issue. I just, I just, I'm not exactly sure how to fix it. Mm -hmm. No, you only know the first part of the issue. There's five more layers underneath that, that you need to become aware of. Because when you start asking why more, you start getting down to the true outcome that you're seeking. Too often, we just get caught up at the very top part, right? Mm-hmm. It's, oh, I, I, you know, I just need to lose weight. Hmm. Tell me more. Why? Yeah. Why do you need to lose weight? Well, you know, it's just hard to go upstairs, and you know, I, I just don't, I don't feel really confident about myself. Well, why don't you feel confident about yourself? Well. You know, when I have to fit in these clothes, I just, I I feel ugly. Who told you that you were ugly? I told myself I was ugly. Okay. Well, what if you could tell yourself that you're beautiful? Because if you can tell yourself you're ugly, can you tell yourself you're beautiful? And we keep going down the path to be able to understand where is this coming from? Because I want all people to work out. I want people to eat healthy. I want those things. Mm -hmm. But tell me the real reason. What's the real outcome? The outcome isn't to fit into your size, you know, four jeans. That's not the outcome. We in in fitness and nutrition as coaches, we don't sell fitness programs, nutrition programs, lifestyle development programs. We sell confidence. We sell calm. We sell control. We sell peace. We have to understand if that is the value that we're bringing It's not the barbell, it's not the dumbbell, it's not the nutrition program, it's not the coaching session. It's what we're bringing to them, that they can walk out of the session, the the gym, whatever, going, I feel confident, I feel calm, I feel like I belong, I feel like I'm in my own skin. And that's doing 4,000 plus one-on-one introductions. That's what got me to that point, because I kept realizing like, we should be a bazillionaires at our affiliate because if I've done 4,500 one-on-one introductions, Mm -hmm. that means we should have thousands of members. Yeah. What's going on here? And we had a great system and we had great coaches and they were all pro coaches and they all had salaries. I mean, we had stuff dialed down Mm -hmm. yet. You you have this, there's kind of a saying, right? You, You can, take the kid out of the candy store, right? Mm-hmm. But not the candy store out of the kid. Mm-hmm. If that's what I believe, oh, I'm just addicted to sugar. You know, I just can't say no to sweets. Yeah. You're creating the identity. When we create the identity, we create the story, we create the story, we create the reality. And it's so vital, you guys. Your words are shifting you every single day. What you say will create the story, which will create your reality. Be careful with your words. And that's where I started going after it. And that's where I got introduced to it. The Enlifted Method and Mm -hmm. and Mark England, the more and more I searched, because I knew psychologically there was something going on here. And my study was in speech communications, Mm -hmm. uh, my undergrad. And so words were always something I'm like, there's, there's power here. What is this? Yeah. And, and that, that really is what, what drove me to where I'm at now. Yeah. It's, you know, after I spoke with Mark and we were talking about soft words and language and stuff. And it, again, it's one of those things that, yeah, we know like watch your words. Oh, there's no such thing as can't all that type of stuff. But when you actually pay attention to what you're saying, 
Mm -hmm. and realize how many filler things we just throw in there at all times and then just put it in there. Oh yeah. I'm a carboholic, you know? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm this. It's like, yeah, you're just throwing an identity on there so easily. And then yeah. most of the people around you, like either one, they just don't want to get into a heavy conversation probably at the moment, or they also mm -hmm. don't want to, you know, they don't want to challenge you as well. So, oh yeah, me too. Absolutely. And then yeah. it's a little self-soothing party that gets in but those qu those questions are interesting like the asking why and having because those aren't usually on the tip of your tongue like it's you sit in silence for a moment or two and that's a if you're not used to it that silence is deafening in many ways you got to get comfortable in that silence i'm sure it took you a little while to get comfortable in that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i, I uh, used to be a machine gun mouth is what I call it. Mm -hmm. Right. So machine gun mouth is where you do a drive by. You don't know how to really handle your emotions and you don't like it. So you want to say something. We all have those people, right. That are just going to like spat out, right. Cause they're actually scared. And if I throw all these words at you, it makes me feel better. And then I can just keep driving. I can just keep moving where you're just like, Whoa, what did you just say? You know? And what I learned, and a lot of people who listen to me on podcasts will recognize that a lot of times I will take long pauses. And those pauses are a reminder to me that one, I'm safe. Two, I'm under control. And the slower that I speak, then it easier it is for my thoughts to come to words, to come to reality. Because I know that I can never take back the words that I say, never. I can be forgiven, but I can never take them back, right? And so it's very vital. I'm thinking that I'm literally, my words are a loaded gun and I need to be very careful in what I'm saying. And it's not to put a pressure on me whether I'm right or wrong or good or bad. It's being able to understand the power of our words. And by slowing down our tempo, and this is a technique for public speaking as well, when you public speak, you're, you're meant to speak at 70% of your normal rate because it draws people in yeah. and you want to speak slower to be able to bring those people in so that they're on the edge of your seat. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing we should be in life is we should be asking a lot more questions and making a lot less statements, but we tend to do the opposite. And there's a reason why majority of us are living more in a sympathetic state than a parasympathetic state yeah, because we're making a lot more statements and creating a lot more fights and conflicts mm -hmm. than we are asking questions and creating a lot more understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if too, we talk all the time about the times that we live in of social media, of there's so much noise around us at all times too, if that's even naturally changed our cadence a little bit, you know, like oh, where sure. I, yeah, where yeah. I was, you know, I was in a space for a while where you know, I, I worked for somebody who was very dominant. They always spoke over you. So anytime I had a chance to speak or I had a point to say, I would jump in as quick as possible. Cause it's like, mm. you, it's almost like you don't know if you're going to get in the game or not. So all of a sudden you have like a chance yeah, to go right. score a goal and you want to maximize your spot because you don't want to be back. Right. So I would go in with new people and almost overbearingly power them with knowledge and words mm -hmm. and What's tough about that, Joel, is, and you might have probably seen this before as well, it, sometimes that works, mm -hmm. you know, because it works with people who are desperate to do something, they want to change, and they're like, okay, they're almost submissive to you, but often those are the people that a month down the road or a couple down the, you know, months down the road, they're gone quickly, and that's why in our business, it's like three month turnover is the average rate all the time right. of fitness and nutrition programs. So right. mm -hmm. to get over that hump, it's like, yeah, it's starting at that beginning of that That's process. Right. And, you know, taking that time is very powerful. How do people like when you get into work with people now, mm -hmm. and that you have that initial onboarding, you know, type yep. conversation, are people, do you see, are people very uncomfortable still sometimes of getting into that conversation or is it much easier now? Is it a pretty simple process and conversation that you have now? Yeah. You know, the information that we put out, mm -hmm. we drip out that we are a, there's a psychological piece to what we do. Mm -hmm. 
And that's important. The messages you're putting out to everyone else so that they're not blindsided, but there are also, you know, we have a saying, give them what they want, leave them with what they need. Too often as coaches, we're like, oh, you, you know what you need, you know, you need stable shoulders so you don't have, you know, aches and pains. And so we're selling a stable shoulder program when people are like, no, I want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to lose weight and we're going to talk about, do you have any aches? Like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to get that weight problem. No, don't worry, don't worry about it. Give me aches and pains. Yeah. My shoulder hurts a ton. Often it usually stops me from exercising. Oh, weird. And the reason you can't lose weight because you're not exercising. Cool. We'll give them what they want. Okay. We're going to give you some cardio, some strength training, some of what we're also going to give you, check this out. We're going to give you some mobility stuff to do. And we're going to want you to do this for three and a half weeks. And I want you to see how your shoulder feels. And they're like, oh my gosh, my shoulders never felt this good. Bingo. We just gave them a feeling, relief, confidence, and keep working out. And so you've nailed it there. And so we give them what they want. So we talk about nutrition, lifestyle, creating a calm, committed, controlled life, right? And people are like, oh, okay, cool. And then we start off with a connection call with Emily, who's my business partner. She She's the nutrition side. So she's able to ask some questions on nutrition physically, and mm -hmm. then they get passed on to me. And then at that point, I'm able to start asking the whys. Okay, cool. So I saw uh, on your mm -hmm. call with Emily that you kind of talked about weight or, you know, you feel really busy throughout your day and you feel like you don't have any control. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that if you, if you've created a safe space with yourself, I'm not attached to the answer. I'm not attached if they give me it or they don't give me it. Doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to feel like I'm a failure because I didn't you know, get the answer I was looking for, right? When you do that and you create that safety, people feel it and they'll just answer you. And if you just answer them firm, you don't beat around the bush. Well, tell me more. Are you having troubles with your, your husband at home? They want to actually talk about it. And if you ask them straight up, well, is your relationship with your husband causing you to eat more? Yeah, it is. I can understand that. I appreciate you sharing that with me. And you're not alone. There's a lot of people who also deal with that. Boom, right there. I just gave him go, oh, cool. I'm all by myself. And I gave him a moment to express something they've been holding on to for who knows how long. And even if it's just a random guy that they just met from this proclivity program, yeah. They just went, oh man, that felt good to get that out. Yeah. But now that, I'm giving them a feeling. Yeah. That's a, I mean, that's giving a form of confidence, you know, to actually, 100%. to actually speak about something that is very vulnerable to you with somebody. And then you recognize, oh, I'm still okay. Mm -hmm. Like I'm okay. I was able to speak that. It's, it's right. I, I love that you said that. I mean, everything gears into confidence. You know, I think sometimes as coaches, we forget that. Like you can mm -hmm. get very lost in the aesthetics of it or the structure of it or the name of your program of how awesome and sexy it is. That's right. Yeah, yeah. When in the reality, if you give somebody self confidence in that, yeah, I've spoken about this on a podcast before, but when I was at, a, a gym I managed for 10 years, my mm -hmm. office was right in front of where everybody swiped in. Yeah. And I would see how people walked into the gym. And you would see the difference of people who are really on point with their yeah. program after a few months of how they would walk into the gym. At first, it's like that shuffle of the feet in, yeah, like yeah, very, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, very just self conscious, they don't know what it is, the gym can be a mm -hmm. very scary place for people, then all of a sudden, they've, you know, started you know, if they're losing weight, they've dropped a little bit, their energy's up, like whatever it is, they're starting to feel some progress. You mm -hmm. see it in their cadence of how they walk, or they would just swipe it in and just mm -hmm. hit, you know, hit the floor <laughs> right away. And I would go to people often and be like, Hey, do you know, like, you know, you're walking differently in the gym. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what, what are you talking about? It's like, yeah, yes. how you walk in the gym right now. And then like, you know what? I feel really good. I feel, and yes. I feel really confident. Almost something they innately knew but yes. they sometimes don't even know how to articulate it well. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, your, conf your confidence is up right yes. there. And when you can speak and you can give somebody that confidence in that, man, as a, as a coach, I know like that's such a powerful feeling when somebody is coming up to you and they all of a sudden now are engaged in the process with you. It's like, that is, that's a coach's dream right there. 
Yeah, that's that's what we are designed to do as coaches. We are designed to take people to their destinations. Mm -hmm. And we we know, right, we're the the coach, right, is I sit and coach on an airplane, right, on a train. I'm in coach, Mm -hmm. right? Our job is to provide a safe place to get them to their destination. And too often coaches get caught in like it has to be this way. Yeah. No, no, no. The answer is yes and coaching. I tell coaches all the time, that doesn't mean that you allow them to bend the confines of what your program is. It's yes in coaching. And if they are going like, I'm too scared for this. Yes. And I'm going to adjust this for you. It doesn't mean I'm going to go from like, you know, Hey, this is our program that we do, right. We do foundational awareness when it comes to nutritional habits and you want me to do macros. We don't do macros. That's not the direction we're going to go. I'm not going to allow you to go outside those lines, but I will help to continue coach you to give you that safety or that confidence, or that control, Mm -hmm. or that calm. And that's our job as coaches. And if you focus more on creating calm or confidence, and less about getting them a 315 pound back squat, or glistening muscles, you win them for a longer time. Because if I get to 315 pound back squat, right, and my confidence or my identity is in a 315 pound back squat, and then all of a sudden I hurt my knee or all of a sudden I take a vacation and I come back and I can't do a 315 pound back squat. What are people going to say? Oh, I fell off the rails. I'm off track. What track were you on? Yeah. What are you talking about? I need to get back into why do you want to go in the past? Mm-hmm. When we start breaking that and we start going, no, I'm going to give you confidence the very first day you're walking it. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to connect to external factors like PRs. not saying that we aren't going to celebrate them, right? Those are always cherries on top. Absolutely. What we're going to celebrate is we're going to celebrate your confidence. Mm -hmm. We're going to celebrate getting you in in control of the things that you have fear of. If we can do that as coaches, we've won. And now you got them for years, Mm -hmm. years, you will have clients. Yeah. It's a powerful statement too. You know, I think too, when, you know, it's, such a joy to have a client who is open to asking you questions and telling you when they're uncomfortable mm-hmm. with something. Cause most, cause a lot of people will just not say anything. And then all That's of right. a sudden you just can't, you, you know, you don't hear from them again, you know, for mm-hmm. a couple of weeks. So mm-hmm. Joel, I want to ask you about this transition that you've had in your life. You were very, cause you were very successful in Cro- uh, you know the CrossFit space, owning yeah. the gym. You had a couple of different spots, and then right. you know with you know high you know high revenue, all the things that many coaches really dream of. But then you want you transitioned more into the space of mindset, the space of life coaching, really yeah. building this own space from there. What what was it about? What was that transition like? Did you feel that there was more you wanted to give as a coach, and and you couldn't do it in your current space, or yeah. was it just kind of a just a natural transformation of you wanted to yeah. do more of the things that you were really passionate about. Yeah. That, that, that's a great clarification to have here is that I started off with a uh, double edge CrossFit as the, their general manager. So I helped them grow their first location to 350 members. And then the owners wanted to open up a second location. And at this point we were in conversation about becoming business partners and, you know, being like, well, Bruce in the pudding here helped grow your your first business and now you want to do a second one and i was really against the the second one by the way i was like we're doing great over here right we're doing sixty five thousand dollars per month plus every single month like this is a really healthy place to be and they wanted to open the second location and they wanted me to stay in the midtown location they didn't even want me to go to the other one well the other one was then really struggling we were losing thirty two thousand dollars a month in that location so then they sent me over there and I took it from 60 to 260 and through very similar techniques utilized uh, with best hour of the day, which I do business coaching for affiliates now with them. And we got to a point where I put in all this work and talk about external to internal. I had no control over it because I was still just the GM. So no matter how much success I could give the gym, in the end, it wasn't 
mine and there was no control. And even if I would have partnered, it would have been two against one. Gotcha. It would have been the two brothers against one. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't really been like a, a three person partnership. Yeah. And so it was at that point that I went, man, I've seen incredible success here. And this has been incredible, but there's something more I'm seeking for. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the true start of my journey of going like, no, no more external, no more caught up in anything else. So at the pandemic, when the pandemic hit and the owners decide like, Hey, we're going to put everybody on unemployment, which I completely disagreed with. Cause again, mm -hmm. I went, no, we're not going to let this pandemic control yeah. what we do as a business, but they were scared and they, that's the mm -hmm. decision they made. And so I went, nope. As soon as they told me that that night, I went home and filed for my LLC. Mm -hmm. And in a week later, I was starting my own business yeah. because I had the ability to do that. And so I started off and I, I went that direction. And it was a, it was a bold statement to myself of being able to go, mm -mm, internal to external. And that's really where it was a big step for me of letting go of a, a very good salaried position and something yeah. that I'm very successful at and has done really well at where a lot of people respected me and honored me. They'll go, nope, completely on my own. So powerful. You know, it's so interesting. Um, uh, I have a similar path that I went through uh, down the same work expansion. I was going through so, so many different spots and everybody thinks expansion and like that's growth. Like that's just the natural thing to do. We need to expand and go out when that's not the only way to go. If it, if it dilutes the ability that you can do, you know, to give like the best service ever, then you're just, you're just growing with, you're not growing deep mm -hmm. at all from there. So yeah. do you ever, do you ever hear the book, little giants by Bo Burlingham? I, I have, I haven't read it. A really interesting book yeah. about like a lot of companies that decided to stay, like they could have expanded out, but stayed really like strong in the work yeah. that they were doing. Mm -hmm. And I've told a lot of people in the coaching space, I'm like, this is a great book because it's, we think you want to just expand and just get to everybody in the world. When in reality, if, if you really have deep conversations with people, you can have a really powerful business mm -hmm. with, and, and keeping it like in a, like a little bit more of like a smaller space from there. So I decided mm -hmm. kind of in a similar way to do it. And me and my uh, buddy, like former partner, we built this own space and it was a small little spot and built it and a bunch of changes from there. But it's amazing. Like sometimes you, mm -hmm. you need to get out in that space and all of a sudden it just expands your thought process of what you can do. Mm -hmm. And I know mm -hmm. that conversation, the conversations that I started having with people were so different, very similar to a lot of the conversations that we were talking about today. Yes. Yes. A hundred, a hundred percent. I mean, it comes back to like what we were talking about in the beginning of the podcast, which is do simple better. It's one of the things that CrossFit actually a hundred percent nail is like, do the common uncommonly well. Yeah. Oh, you can air squat. No, show me a better air squat. Better than that. Better than that. Better than that. Mm. Because when you nail the air squat, when you have the mobility for it, the strength for it, the stability for it, it transfers over to everything else in the squatting positions but if you don't have your air squat down right mm -hmm. and you're trying to advance to now heavy front squats or squat cleans or snatches you will just show that weakness that much more if you just have a little i just got a little collapse in the knee when i'm down at the bottom of my air squat but it's not that big a deal oh it isn't mm -hmm. let me add 225 pounds on now what happens to that knee right. holy crap yeah. completely collapses in. And then if we do that time and time again, oh, it becomes an injury and there becomes a collapse. It's the same thing with businesses. Yeah. You haven't done that. You haven't put enough reps in that because everybody's pushing you to do more. For your, you know, do create an online course, do free PDFs, make sure that you're reaching out in your social media, do 25 posts a day, do all, they're all just trying to sell you something. Yeah. Just like we are trying to sell something. Mm -hmm. Be very careful of who you're listening to and do the simple things better, period. And when you get that down, it gets such a strong foundation for you to build your success of your business and yourself. Yeah. I think that there's such a strong lesson in the mental side of it as well there, Joel. Like when you talked about the air squat and like get like be the best air squatter in the world right now. Mm -hmm. again. Because like when you talk about like, oh, the knees classic, but it's not that bad. Like just talking about the same thing with words it's like you're naturally putting in your mind, it's okay to be a little bit off in this, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I've, I've talked about that with clients before of like, just having even the simplest thing 
but you say that you're going to do it and then you get it done. You're building into not just the habit of eating this way, you're yeah. going for a walk and all those things are important. You're building the habit of when you say you're going to do something, you do it. That's right. And, and you start to trust your word more and more. So by the time it comes to the more challenging things or the things that require a little bit more intensity or more volume, mm -hmm. you're already in that mindset that when you say you're going to do something, you get it done. And That's you right. do it to the best of our ability. So it's so cool. Like it's, there's the physical side, but that just, again, it's going back to confidence. I think the whole, the greatest theme about this podcast is build your confidence up to the highest degree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you guys put in the reps, yeah. trust the reps. We are what we repeatedly do, what we repeat and repeat and repeat, whatever your repetitions are. And if we don't know that we're have that little knee collapse in our mind, when we say, well, it is what it is. How does that feel for you? Or is it, it is what I created to be, which one feels more empowered. And so if I just go, well, yeah, you know, I got in an accident. It is what it is. That feels very disempowering to me. And this is just one of thousands of examples of different statements that people will make on a daily, not realizing that, Nope, a little less empowerment, a little less empowerment. And then we wonder why we struggle with self-confidence. We wonder why we need to get the glistening muscles or the new car or the new clothes to be able to try to pull us back into some confidence as we continue to tell ourselves, it is what it is. I'm just this way. I'm never going to be able to change. Good luck then. Good luck. Joel, this has been an absolute pleasure of having you on. I really appreciate you taking the time. I've loved this conversation. I feel like we can go on for hours. So oh, I'm, sure could, part, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure a part two is going to have to be in the works sure. here as we go forward. But thank you so much for taking the time and speak to me today. I really appreciate it. It was it was a, it was a pure pleasure for me, and uh, I hope anybody listening, um, you know, took some some good stuff out of this. And no. uh, I'd love to come back for sure. Uh, no doubt. If people want to follow you, check out more of the work that you're doing with Proclivity, what's the best place that they can go and check it out? Yeah, you can go to Instagram, proclivity.co. You can head to our website, www.proclivity.co. Co. You can email myself or Emily at joel at proclivity.co or emily at proclivity.co. We're, we're here to help. We're here to assist. If you ever want to jump on a call and learn more about what we do, mm -hmm. uh, particularly if you're a coach, yep. this is a, this is a good, good route to take. Beautiful. Brother, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Listeners, much love to you. Thank you so much for listening. Go check out Joel, follow it in the show notes, and I'll be back with another one soon for you guys. All right, peace. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some great value here. And if you like this episode, please drop a comment and leave us a five-star rating and review. It does more to build the show than you can imagine. And do not forget to check out and join the Strength Connection Facebook group. In this group, I share the biggest takeaways and lessons from these amazing conversations, as well as training and strength tips for pursuing mastery and fulfillment in life. It's, this group is filled with individuals looking to take full control over their strength, and it's the perfect space to explore new ideas and to share your journey. And you'll also get exclusive access to the Strength Connection Mastery Seminars. It's a deep dive into the physical, mental, and spiritual training that you can begin using immediately. So do not wait. Go now. Seriously, go. I right, much love to you. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.